In this video, I'm going to show you guys how I take my client, Denise, who has an all-over global application of lightener. It's got a little bit of some warmth in her zone 2 to zone 3 area. You guys can see where she's like a little bit blonder in the root area. And then definitely warmer till the mid to ends. We're going to be taking her to a really gorgeous, rooty, trendy... Um, sombre color so I'm gonna show you guys how to do this without creating patchiness or streaks and still keeping some highlights so please like and subscribe if you are not already um, that helps a ton and then you guys can see future videos on how we do this so we're gonna get very in-depth and this is gonna be a little bit longer of a video so you guys can figure out how to do it on your clients remember this is done in a professional for professionals so for our root shade I'm using 10 volume with shades eq 6 na and 7 gb i am doing now it all depends on whatever my client is coming in with so i'm actually doing about half and half on denise today um your client is going to be probably a little bit different proportions but i either like to do half and half or i like to do uh, two thirds of seven GB to one third of six and a a level seven six is really really great and using a ten volume it's going to be deposit only so Denise sections with a part more towards her right side so you guys can see I have the side sectioned off and then the side where she parts further up on the side where you guys can see the right right here um, I sectioned that one half in half. So when we get there, I'll show you guys. So starting in the nape area, I always start in the nape area when doing these. I'm just gonna kind of outline my section. I'm using a Fermar brush. I like the smaller ones because um, this comes in like the trio. I like these smaller ones because it allows me to do more detailed work with my clients, especially when I'm doing any type of balayaging or reverse balayaging like we're doing today. We're essentially going in and changing her to a balayage, but we gotta add in that depth. So that's why we call it a reverse balayage. So these brushes are really great because they aren't super harshly straight on the bristles and they just kind of help to feather in the color and put it exactly where you want it. So I'm going to be working in two sections, um, kind of like from the ears down, just because it's so, it's like such a broad amount of space. It just allows me to really go in and place the color how I want it. So once I've outlined all that, then I'm going to start to go in and about do like an inch to two inches of root um, for back here in this underneath part because I don't need to have some of the blonde pieces go up higher back here. So I'm just going to work from my top part of that section down towards the bottom. I love working with demi permanents in this situation because you're still allowed to use a developer, which I'm using a 10 volume. It gives you some great coverage and some great deposit without having that regrowth line that you get with like permanent colors and that situation because if she wanted to go a little bit lighter later on it's not going to be hard for me to cut through this with lightener so that's why i like to go in with a demi permanent versus a permanent color and this shades cream just works so well it gets in there and it stays where i want it to so i love working with this not to mention it has incredible shine so once I have established all of that root area, I'm going to start working from the bottom towards the top. Now I'm taking very, very small sections. Now Denise has very fine hair, so I don't have to take as small of sections with her, but you still have to take some pretty small sections. Um, I'm working horizontally going up the head, and you guys can see I did my first one, so I just kind of skipped that one. So I'm going to go on to this second slice. So I'm taking slices, and I'm placing my color in horizontally, and then I'm using my brush to feather it down vertically. Now, once I have a kind of my, my color placement on here, I'm going to go back in with my blur brush, and I'm just going to blur those lines. So let's get a little bit more in detail with this. I'm going to put a foil on top of that because I section out my color as I'm doing this so it doesn't bleed onto the other hair because if you're just doing this free-handed on such blonde hair you're gonna get some problems so first I comb this down so that it is nice and broken up and flat and then I'm going to place my color in horizontally just to get that main part done I'm coming down about five to seven inches it varies on every single foil I'm doing different placement so that it looks really natural and then I'm going in with that blur brush and just blurring 
that end line to make sure that it is really softly going into that blonde. We do not want any lines, any yuckiness happening to this. So I'm working in small, very small. I mean, you should be able to read a newspaper through that section, very small slices. And I am doing a couple slices in between my foils. So I'm not doing like a foil for every slice. I'm doing about three slices and then putting a foil on top. And then you guys can see just using that smudge brush. If you guys have not used the Redken smudge brush, it is incredible for doing balayaging. It's incredible for doing reverse balayaging. It's incredible for doing color melts, all kinds of stuff. So you guys can see, I'm also doing another technique right here where I am weaving out some larger pieces throughout the bottom. And what this is gonna do is I'm actually gonna go down further with my darker pieces right here. So I'm putting this darker pieces down a lot further, kind of, I would say about two thirds to like a halfway down the hair, just to have a few fingers of darker color coming down. So I'm gonna kind of keep on doing this kind of um, assortment of longer and shorter pieces working through the hair. Then once I get towards that ear area, like right below the ear up to the top of the ear, I'm gonna break this up into two sections just so that I can keep it a little bit more neat and uniformed. So the most important thing out of all of this is just to keep clean sectioning. So once I get towards the top, then I can go back to using one foil again. So you guys can see I'm using a slice, I'm applying my color, and then I'm gonna go back and smudge it with a smudge brush. Now when we get towards the top of the head, we're going to go a little bit finer with our details because the top is going to be seen and we want it to be a little softer. So you guys can see I'm adding in a few panels of slices and now what I'm going to go do is kind of do a little bit bigger than a baby light and what I'm doing right here is I'm putting it only about an inch down and then I'm gonna go back in with my smudge brush and just kind of smudge that down. So that's kind of gonna be like where we would place a highlight. Remember, we're having to think of this in reverse. So I'm keeping all of that hair inside the foil so no other dark touches that. Now I'm moving on to another weave section, but with this one, I'm actually bringing it down lower. So I'm doing another one where I weaved out a piece and I'm gonna bring this down pretty low to have a few fingers of darker color that goes further down. So I just kind of moved you guys down a little bit to see. That way it just kind of adds some depth underneath there to bring out the color. So again, I'm just going in horizontal sectionings and adding in my depth to this hair, bringing this one. I When I go towards the top of the head, I tend to go a little bit higher up. That way it's not such a deep depth of color. So I'm working at about five inches to four inches there. So now when I'm going over to the sides, we're gonna be doing this a little bit differently. For those of your clients that wanna still be pretty blonde in the front, I like to do a kind of like a weave in a diagonal right along their hairline right there, as you guys can see. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna to touch the root area with our darker color, our level six, seven. And then I'm gonna place a foil underneath it, like you see there, going towards their face. And what this does is it just kind of sections out a spot that's gonna be blonder. So I'm gonna smudge that little area right there. And then we're going to keep all of this hair inside the foil. That's just gonna ensure that that front piece, when they bring their hair up and away from their face, it's still gonna be bright there and not super dark. So now we're gonna work in diagonal back sections. And I'm just going to start placing in that root color, just like we did in the back. We're just gonna do about an inch here because we don't want the front to be um, further down, we want this to stay a little bit higher than the back area. So again, working in diagonal back sections, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be placing the darker color higher towards the face and lower towards the back of the head or the ear area. So let me show you guys. We're going to place a foil under here so we don't get color all over her head. I'm going to go in vertically and I'm going to paint it in higher towards her face and lower towards the back. So you guys can see, cause you have to think about when you're placing in, think about when you're doing a balayage. You're gonna be going higher with your lightener towards the face to give that sun kissed money look towards the face and lower towards the back or you're gonna be working with V's and W's. So think of where you would be wanting to place your lightener and essentially you're doing the opposite. So again, I brought down another slice. I'm doing a little higher towards the face and a little lower towards the back. 
Then I'm going to grab my handy dandy smudgy brushy and blend that all down. Then place a foil over the top of this to make sure that our sections aren't bleeding on top of each other. So let's get a little bit zoomed in and kind of go over the same thing that we just saw but with a little bit closer of a perspective. So I'm taking a small, small section, we're combing it out, bringing it down, and then I'm placing my color in and then I'm going to use my ver brush vertically and you can also hold the bottom of your section if you have these like little wispy baby hairs that just kind of want to come up with your brush and it's really annoying. So you guys can see this one, I only took it about two to three inches down. So you can definitely vary your placement because that's what's going to keep it very organic and natural looking. So I'm going to take down another horizontal back section, comb it out, and then I'm going to place the color on top with my brush following the same thing that we did underneath, going vertical, a little bit higher in the front, a little bit lower in the back, and then just smudge that through. So once we get to this top area, it's gonna change a little bit. When you have about two inches away from the part line, you're gonna be changing your direction. So what I'm doing is I'm taking out a small diagonal forward piece from that entire section. You guys can see that's that entire chunk. And I'm doing a very, very small amount in that front piece of where I'm placing the dark because we want these to be our money pieces and we want this to be very, very, very light. So I'm gonna place that one right there. That's all I'm gonna to do to that. I'm gonna lay a foil over that and then I'm going to hop into taking another section directly behind that. Can you guys see how I'm like working that entire two inch section going back? So what I'm going to be doing is placing the color a lot lighter on this top section, making sure that I definitely keep my darker towards the top shorter and then adding more depth as I go down to the bottom of that section and then blending that out. Now I'm going to continue to do the same thing. I'm gonna put a foil over that, go to another section, pull that down as my foil decides to drop and not protect the previous section like I wanted it. This is going to give us that really beautiful, gorgeous depth in the top with still bringing that light over the top. So these pieces are extremely important to make sure that you're not bringing it down too far all the way throughout the top, but keeping in mind to see where your light and your darkness is going to fall when your client is going to rinse her hair out. So I'm going to actually section that top piece off of that two inch section. We're gonna come back to that in a second and I will show you why. So again, I'm gonna take a diagonal back section, bring this towards the face, paint in that dark, and then use my smudge brush to smudge that out. You guys, I promise this is going to create the most beautiful part to your hair that gives depth, dimension, and brightness all in one. So we're just going to finish out that little tiny corner by doing this exact same thing. Working with Shades EQ Cream is probably one of my favorite products in the world ever to do this smudgy brushy thing. You guys can see that I just made sure to keep that little tiny weaved part sectioned up and out of the way from this last smudged root. So now what we're going to do is lay a foil underneath this. I'm going to bring these very few weaved pieces that I left directly on the part. I'm going to put a tiny bit of product, so like a half an inch right at the root just to make sure it has a shadow root and then I'm going to blend it down because these are going to be a few highlighted pieces on the top. Now when you guys are getting into the bang area, if your client has bangs, you want to make sure that you section those out and do those separately. Again, because you want to touch it about a half an inch um, or so and then blend that down very softly with your smudge brush. You don't want to be adding a ton of darkness in this area because people like their bangs and their fringe to be a lot brighter. So we're going to do the same thing to the opposite side. You guys just saw Kaylee hop in. She cracks me up. But to this top piece again, the two inches right before the part line, you guys are gonna wanna do this a little bit different. Now Denise has bangs, so we're going to make sure that we're doing this very soft in the front. So I'm going to take weaved pieces in the front. We're gonna be working with very small sections right here. 
you guys can see I have two tiny little weaved pieces. I'm going to put a foil underneath this section and I actually don't go and color this whole section first because I want to place the darkness exactly where I want it. So I'm going to be putting about like a half an inch right here and then actually I'm going to smudge it with my fingertip because the brush is a little bit too big to work in these small areas like the bang area. So I'm going to be doing this to about five to six foils back taking very very small pieces brushing the color right onto the root and then smudging it with my finger. I'm going to lay down another foil and do the same thing. I'm going to take a weave section, pull that down, do like maybe now like two thirds of an inch, put that down and then close that foil up. Do one more right here, taking it maybe about an inch now. So kind of like working your way from a half an inch to an inch. And now we're going to do the same thing that we did to the top on the other side. I'm going to take a diagonal back piece. I'm going to lay my depth and my darkness down and I'm going to keep it a little bit higher towards my part and a little bit lower towards the bottom of that section and then go in with my smudge brush and do this working towards the back of the head. Different stylists like to do different type of sectioning. This is what I have found to work the best for me and to keep it natural while having all of that really beautiful light and contrast kind of meeting the perfect marriage in between so I'm going to keep working towards the crown area laying down foils I like to work in smaller sections and add more foils in this top section just because I'm working with more I guess important pieces so I don't tend to be a large sectioner when it comes to doing a reverse balayage I think that people try to sometimes power through this when if you guys take the time, you guys can make it look like you just did this super incredible gorgeous balayage and you're just placing in that depth where that depth needs to be. So this is such a cool trick to just adding it in and making sure that you're not creating any splotchiness anywhere. So you guys can see I'm doing a few bigger chunks right here towards the back of the crown and I'm going to paint these pieces a little bit further down. That way I still have some depth in that top area. You guys can throw these in when you want. Um, you guys can see me using a few different techniques. I'm using slices, I'm using a little bit bigger of chunks, and then I'm using baby lights too. So comboing all of these together is what creates a really gorgeous color. Again, on the part that is on my part line, I am not taking my client's dark as far down. You guys can see I sectioned that off. So I'm kind of keeping that a little bit higher. And then those back two um, weaved pieces, I'm bringing a little bit lower. So again, keeping that dark and that light where I want. I will say that a million times. I told you guys I was going to get pretty in depth with this. So I'm going to lay a foil over that guy and just kind of finish this tiny little triangle. I'm going to weave out those top pieces right there, right on the part line and leave those out so I can make those a little bit brighter. And I'm just going to take a few more slices and work back towards that crown area once again and finish up this little tiny triangle. Once I finish that triangle, I'm going to bring those few little weaved sections that I left out down. I'm going to do about a half an inch right there on the root area just to make sure that I do have a little bit of that shadow root put in. And then I'm just going to use my blending blur brush to blur that down a little bit. And we have just finished. So then I'm going to allow her to sit for 20 minutes at room temperature. I'll take her back. I'll rinse these out in cool water after that. I toned her, air, her hair. Just with one of my favorite things to knock out yellow and that's 9P and clear with a few drops of Violet Booster. Then we Olaplex number two it. This is a good time to trim the hair. And then we shampooed and conditioned it. So super easy. So I wanted to show you guys this. Everywhere in her hair, it took really well, but this underneath part, she had a few splotches underneath when I was drying it to check everything, and that is no bueno for me. So all I did is I went back in with the 7GB and just kind of reapplied that with a bottle and a brush, just right there, and then kind of combed through it. Left that on for 10 minutes to fill any gaps. Most of the time this happens when they're so, so, so light that they kind of need their hair to be filled a little bit. So once we did that, we just went and rinsed and conditioned it again. And now I'm going to put in a little bit of 
Evo's products to help give her some volume through the top of her hair. And then I use a little bit of End Doctor just to help seal her cuticle on her ends because she's super blonde and you know super blonde means very, very porous. So once I did that, I just kind of blew her hair out. Again, she has that fine, fragile hair, so I didn't want to do a ton even though we didn't use lightener. Um, we have to be careful with the hair that we're working on not to stress it out or do anything crazy. So now once we have it blown out, you guys can see this before and after. How seamless is this? You have the brightness, you have the dimension, you have the more cooler ends and it just gives you this really gorgeous, gorgeous look from all those different techniques that we threw into this hair. It looks so beautiful afterwards and what a big difference. So thank you so much for watching. I hope that you guys have enjoyed. Please go and find me on Instagram, find me on Snapchat and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!